We welcome all of you to Nissan Stadium on the banks of the Cumberland River in downtown Nashville, Tennessee. The whole of downtown Nashville likely still reverberating with the sounds of the Titans taking the field a moment ago. They're ready for football as their Titans are set to match up. And he'll make it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line with the Indianapolis Colts. On first and 10, Locke. The completion good. This is Eric Ebron. And he's got it past the 30 before he's hit and dropped. 10 yards there to start the drive and just enough by about the length of the football for a first down. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. They'll run it here. This is Marlon Mack. Solid move, but he's corralled just beyond the 40. Eight yards on the pickup, and now they'll have some options on second and short. Well, you often say that sort of opens the playbook now, second and short. What do you think, early shot here? I like where you're going. Obviously, we've been together for a while because you know me. I want to take that shot early and loosen things up. Now the rookie from NC State, this is Naeem Hines. And he'll get up to the 43-yard line. Two yards on the pick up there, but it's enough to give him a new set of downs. But well, we always talk about good down and distance, allowing offenses to expand their playbook. Well, second and two, that means your playbook's wide open. You can run just about anything. But a lot of times, the play caller, he just looks down at his sheet, sees the short yardage runs, and goes to one of those. They'll run with Mack. And an alley to run. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. Give the Colts 13 yards and a first down. Well, one unit I know you want to watch is that offensive line. If they keep clearing holes like that, it could be a long night defensively. No doubt about it, because when they are in sync, as we're seeing so far, when that continuity is there, and you can see that they're playing off of each other while controlling the defensive front linebackers, you're exactly right. It could be a very long night for the defense, but someone's going to run for some big yardage. And he's taken down inside the 30. 15 more there, and they're on a roll. It's another first down. So back-to-back -back big runs, picking apart this defense on the opening drive. I thought this was a passing league. I thought this was the <laughs> era we were in where the ball was always in the air, right? They didn't get the memo. And they didn't get the memo, and I know this to be true. Offensive linemen still, to this day, they want to run the football. They want to fire out and hit people across the line of scrimmage, and they're clearing space. Right back to him on first down. And he'll be taken down just shy of the red zone at the 21. Just what you want on a first down run. Call it eight yards, and it's second and two. If these kinds of lanes are available, you have to feel like he's going to have a pretty big game on the ground. Yeah, you can tell early on he's got a little burst in his step, and that's a big pickup right there on first down. They'll run it now out of the gun. And on this one, he'll get to the 15, right at the 15-yard line. It'll go as a gain of six that time, and it moves the chains as well. Quite the opening drive march they're on right now. It looks a lot like what we saw in practice prior to the game, doesn't it? You know, because on that last big practice beforehand, you go through your offensive script, you go through your play calling, you go through all the stuff and establish things, and it looks like it's going like clockwork right now for them. From the red zone now, Locke. That's complete right around the eight. And all the way down inside the five to the four. It's a nice pickup of 12 yards, and it gives him a first and goal. There's a completion to the tight end, and I think that we're looking at something out of central casting, frankly. Absolutely. I mean, size, the hands. The speed. I mean, can flat out run. You put that whole package together, you light up the eyes of an offensive coordinator, don't you? They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And forget about finding a lane. He barely had time to look up before he was planted in the backfield. It'll be a loss of a yard, and it'll be second and goal. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense, countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. 
He's going to get it running right. He'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. They've been stuffed twice here for losses. Now it's third and goal. A shotgun snap for Love. And this is going to be incomplete. LaShawn Sims right there in coverage, and he knocks it away. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. And Vinatieri's kick is good. Adam Vinatieri, he just keeps doing it. I mean, you look back to week eight, past Morton Anderson becoming the NFL's all-time leading scorer. What a career it has been for him. And not many kickers in the Hall of Fame, but Adam Vinatieri will join them in the Pro Football Hall of Fame. It's just a matter of when. And I'm wondering if he's accumulated enough to be a first ballot Hall of Famer. I would say so, because it's not just longevity that's gotten him this record. Think about the kicks that he's made. The kick against Oakland in the snow in the playoffs. How about the, the, the Super Bowl kick against the Rams when he's with the Patriots? How about with the Colts getting it done there and winning another Super Bowl? He's made so many big kicks that we can remember. He's one of those guys that I believe we should talk about being a first ballot Hall of Famer. And the Tennessee Titans, their situation right now, Charles, in a fight for a wild card spot. They've been a bit of a tough team to figure out this year, but hey, they're getting hot at the right time, and that's December. Yeah, and they've got some signature wins along the way, don't they? Remember they beat Philadelphia earlier in the year at home in overtime. Remember they went on the road and beat Dallas right before Dallas started a streak of five straight wins. But you're exactly right, getting hot at the exact right time. Really jumped on Jacksonville in the Thursday night game not too long ago. Derrick Henry ran wild. How about the follow-up at New York against the Giants in Week 15? Ends up going for well over 100 again. So look out, because when their running game's going, the Tennessee Titans are tough to deal with. I remember watching Derrick Henry come out of Alabama and sitting with some scouts, and one of the debate points with him was, while at Bama, how often did he have to deal with contact near the line of scrimmage? They were so good up front that he often got to the second level pretty easily. I think he's starting to answer those questions with runs like that. He's a physical, physical guy. Trying to bounce it outside, but he's only able to get it back to the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Looked like he was trying to bounce it outside, but no success. Yeah, sometimes you got to just figure out where you're going to go, and sometimes you just have to take it to another spot. In trying to get it outside, the defensive pursuit was there and just ran him down. Play fake to Henry. Now Mariota. Stepping up. He's going to keep it. Mariota had an 87-yard run as a rookie. This one a bit less, but it is a first down. Man, defensively, that hurts. They got him out of his rhythm. They had him hemmed in, but somehow he was able to tuck it away and get away for a gain. The first red zone opportunity for the Titans. They've got a first and 10 at the 15. From the red zone now, Mariota. And the grab made by the tight end, Pruitt. And here he'll get it down to the seven. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Facing a second and two after that last catch. Good for eight yards. From the shotgun, it's Mariota. And he's going to go down. Sacked back at the 13-yard line. Great job defensively. I think he was trying to go through his progressions, find someone to get rid of the football. Before he knew it, he was on his back. So that just brings us right back to what you said in the beginning. A great job defensively. Nowhere to go with the football. That led to the sack. And on third down, the Colts have added an extra defensive back. Flooding the passing lanes. Working out of the gun, Mariota. 
Eluding the pressure. Oh, the pressure too great, and he goes down once more. Charles, a little bit of feast or famine on this drive. They moved the ball okay, but they've been sacked twice now. And they've got to figure out how to plug that leak a little bit, right? Keep them away from the quarterback because when he's not being hit, as you mentioned, they're moving the ball well. So on fourth down, here's the Tennessee field goal unit led by Ryan Succo. And Succo will put this one right through, and that will tie us at 3-3. So matching field goals on our opening two drives. Yeah, it feels like two boxers feeling each other out here in the early going of the game, right? Exchanging some jabs, but none of the heavy stuff just yet. So we're right back where we started, all even as the kick's away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll bring it a few past the 20 to the 23-yard line. Well, Charles, the Indianapolis Colts, you remember this year they started 1-5. That was back on October 14th. That was their record. And then you look up after week 15, that 23 to nothing went over Dallas that you called. And they really have turned this season around. How have they done it? What they've done is they've stayed the course. You know, from the general manager to the head coach, Frank Reich, they had a plan in place. They understood what they were trying to accomplish. They waited for some guys to get healthy. And Andrew Luck's right arm got healthier and healthier. And that team really came together. They've now won seven out of their last eight after week 15. And if they get into the playoffs, they're a type of team that no one really wants to play. A loss of a yard there to start out. That leads to a second and 11. To throw on second down is Locke. Ebron with it over the middle. And they're able to get this one across the 35. Good for a Colt first down. The former Lion Ebron there bringing it in from Andrew Locke. And he's the epitome of what we call the move tight end. A guy that you can line up anywhere, in the slot, out wide, in tight. Doesn't really matter because he has such great skills, you want to utilize him in all aspects of your passing offense. And there he was in the slot for the catch. Throwing his lock over the middle. It's caught by Rodgers. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Second and five after the five-yard completion on first down. They run with Wilkins, and the play goes nowhere. Losing yardage back near the 40 at the 39. Down on the field, we've got an injured Colt after that last play. While the training staff works on him, we'll step aside and be right back. A nickel set shown by the Titans on third down. Think and pass. Out of the gun, Lock. And he's got Rodgers. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. So operating from Tennessee territory now. Here's first and 10 at the 43. Here's Mack. And he works it past the 30, almost to the 25. 17 more yards on that one as they keep the drive rolling. Well, they came into this game saying it was important that they set the tone and show that they can run the football. And I believe that they've done that here in the first quarter. Back 
back with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. The Colts in possession of the football to begin quarter number two. And they're on the move here. They've got it first and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. Down right around the 25. Tackle made by Brian Arakpo. Here's Luck now on second down. And this is caught. A spectacular one-handed grab there. And he'll be a couple yards shy of the red zone here at the 22-yard line. One-handed. Love the effort. Not much production on that play, though, huh? Not a whole lot of yardage. You get that grab, you probably want a first down. And he'll be the one in the film session. He'll be saying, hey, run that one back, Coach. Yeah. Run that one back. One more time. Let's see that Two again. More time. And they won't. Eight more time. They won't. Didn't get much out of it. Throwing on third down, Luck. And incomplete. The contact made the ball roam free and brings up fourth down. That would have been a great catch, but it's real difficult to hold on to it because it was contested all the way. Would have been a great play if he had been able to haul that one in. And for the second time tonight, his field goal unit comes out here. He connected on his first. This time it's 39 yards away. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And they will take the lead here in this battle of field goals. It's 6-3. to three. So we're trading first half field goals. No breakthrough on the touchdown front. We've got a 6-3 game. Yeah, and I know so many people look at a game through offensive eyes, right? They want to see how the game's played that way. You know how I'm going to view it, right? The defenses, to me, have responded well in this game. Like what I'm seeing from them, both of them hoping to keep it to field goals and not give up big touchdowns. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This one fielded at the five. And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And they had three points last time, but they didn't want three points because they were well within range of scoring a touchdown. We'll see if they can do better now. I'm with you on that one. Let's just go ahead and be frank about the whole thing. The only one happy about the three-point? The kicker. Exactly. You <laughs> put it through the post. That's going to help him in contract time. But that offense, they're thinking, let's get in the end zone this time. I don't know if that would help him in contract time. You, you could have kicked that one through. I don't know about that. Toe bash. I don't know about toe that. Toe bashed it. <laughs> Super toe. And he'll get it up near the 35, right at the 35. Four here. Five yards on the catch there. Brings up second down. Second and five after the five yard completion on first down. From the gun, Mariota. All going deep here for Taylor. So the long attempt falls innocently to the ground, and it brings up third. Well, that certainly looked like something that they discussed all week in practice getting ready for this one. Take the big shot right out of the gate. At worst, you'll open up the defense a little bit, loosen them up, have them back on their heels. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Throwing is Mariota. Taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. The coverage may be too good that time as he breaks away for 19 with his legs and a first down. Now that definitely hurts because the mindset is getting a three and out there, and they don't get it done. They give up the scramble and a pickup for a first down. A first down throw for Mariota. And it's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And he is tackled inside the 40, not quite to the 35. They get 10 more there, and I believe that'll be enough for another first down at will. Right. 
Line of scrimmage, the 37 on first and 10. Mariota on first down. Stocker's got it, complete. And he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped. Another nice gain, 16 yards there, and a first down again. Nice idea, nice concept there. Line him up on the left side of the formation, let him sneak his way across, coming back underneath, put it in his hands, let him get a few more yards after the catch, too. Great way to utilize a tight end on the drag route. On first and 10, here's Mariota. Wide open receiver complete. And he gets it inside the 10 to the 9. Another nice gain, 13 yards that time, and another first down. It is hard in zone coverage to stop a curl route because when they see it, they just try and find the open spot and sit down. Yeah, we always talk about finding the soft spot in the zone. What's the key to doing that? How do you do it? You have to read what the coverage is. Is it too deep? Is it three deep? Because then you know where the linebackers are going to drop, what spots on the field they naturally get to, and you find that open space, and then you're in sync with your quarterback. He should be reading the exact same thing, and they put the ball right on you. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. Another shot from the nine on second and goal. To the air again, Mariota. This is caught. And he'll be brought down right on the edge of the goal line at about the one-yard line. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. They've been denied touchdowns in the red zone twice already. Here comes third and goal. They'll throw again. Mariota. Got a man, and it's taken in for a Titans touchdown. In for the score. And the Titans are able to strike for six. Well, it was third and one. I was expecting run so much for that. They pass it, they score it. That had the feel of the head coach telling the offensive coordinator, you've got four downs here. We're going to go for it on fourth down unless there's a disaster on third. Go ahead and take a shot if you want to. And he gratefully accepted the opportunity and did exactly that. If they didn't get it there, that had the feel that they would come back and try it on fourth down. Now here's Suck about to kick it away. Fielded about a yard deep. And this return nets positive as he gets past the 25 and up to the 27 yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. They've probably got some adjustments to make because they've moved the football okay at times, but they haven't been able to get anything consistently going, have they? What you worry about is it almost turns into a basketball game where one team's coming down and hitting threes, and you're coming back and getting twos, and you steadily lose ground. In this situation, you're talking about touchdowns to field goals. They want to put in the end zone and put those sixes on the board. Yeah, they've been settling. That's why they're down on the scoreboard right now. That's going to go as a loss of two, and it'll be second down. Uh, that's a tough one right there. He ran right into the teeth of the blitz as the linebacker was freed up in order to stuff that one for a loss. I think quarterbacks got to see that. Got to find a way to audible into something a little more advantageous. First play of the drive goes the wrong way. Here's second and 12. On second down, here's Lump. Throwing the out route incomplete. That's Hines. It's an eight-yard pickup, and that'll bring up a third down. The Colts on third down, just one for three thus far. This is third and four. From the gun, here's Locke. And he connects with Ebron. And able to get this one across the 45 before he's brought down. 
He's up over 50 yards receiving now in this first half. It's a first down. Luck now hitting on 80% of his passes in the early going. 8 of 10. It's first down. Luck now to throw. This is caught. It's Ryan Graham. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line. Tackled there. Another nice gain. 13 yards that time and another first down. An ex-teammate used to tell me all the time, I hate experienced quarterbacks because no matter what, you really can't hide what you're doing. And I think that right there, he knew right away where the blitz was coming from, where his primary guy was going to be, and he ended up going to a secondary target for a nice game. I was just going to ask you, that wasn't the primary target. And he's so good at that, isn't he? I think he knew right away that he wasn't going to get to his primary guy. I think he read that as soon as he got to the line of scrimmage, knew where the pressure was going to come from, and said, ah, I know how to beat that. And that's what he did. So second down and 10. Once again, they'll go from the 40. Second and 10, luck again. That is incomplete. It's a tried and true formula, and I don't think it'll change for as long as we play football. If someone's trying to throw the ball and you can put pressure on them and make it tough, that's only going to help your defense. Yeah, he's since being hurried. He got rid of it before taking the hit, but incomplete. The Colts on third down. They've hit two for four thus far. This is third and ten. Throwing again is Locke. And that will be incomplete as well. Out is Rigoberto Sanchez on fourth down to punt this thing. Here's the Titan offense now as they make their way back onto the field. And that last drive, a long drive, but not just that, they had a great air attack going. Do they stick with that? I would think that they would because if they were competent enough to do it on the last drive, starting backed up in their own territory, why would you change anything? They've got to be confident about what they're presenting and continue to do so. Yeah, because the secondary, they really look clueless. And that was amazing because that drive went and went. No adjustment. And he can't get away. Mariota goes down, and that is going to be a safety. Well, I think you can go ahead and give your punter an assist on that one. Pinned him deep, and the defense comes through with two points. You're exactly right, partner. This was all set up by a great punt. And if the ball goes in the end zone, this never happens. So great call. Give the punt team and the punter some love. Now the free kick comes after the safety from the 20 as they bring the punter on to try and get some hang time here. Fielded just inside the 20. The Colts offensive unit ready to see what they can do here. They punted last time they had it. What steps, Charles, do you think they have to take to make sure they don't do that again? Well, let's just go to the football 101, the trite expression 101. Win first down. Make five, six, seven yards on first down and make it a second and three, second and manageable. Keep accumulating first downs that way. Keep moving the football. You don't want to get behind the sticks because then the defense has the advantage. Now Love, and he hits his tight end, Ebron. And he'll bring it up here to right at the 40-yard line. A good pick up there, eight yards on the first down completion. Ah, that's tough to play zone defense when they can just curl up right there in front of you. Yeah, absolutely. Well, we, we talk about finding the soft spot defensively. How do you make sure they don't find the soft spot like they did there? Tough to do because what they normally will do is run routes that'll pull you out of that spot they want to get into. That's what we call not taking the cheese, right? Don't go for the mousetrap. But it's hard to do because when you see a guy cutting that in that direction, you tend to go towards him. He can muster only a yard there, and they'll be left with a third and very short. 
He's definitely tough to get down. We just saw it right there. But how about what we did see? Pursuit, wrap up, and then the big finish with the tackle. They'll fake the handoff. Now Love. And it's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And he will have the first down as he's brought down up near midfield. First time that they called his number tonight, and it gets him a first down. Luck now, 11 of 16 through the air. It's first and 10. Luck going to try to run the option left. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It'll wind up being a loss of two. And it'll be second and 12. I don't think there's any doubt that if it's me, I'd be really cautious about continuing to call this play because you got to know, defenders, if they get a free shot at the QB, they want to take it, and they want to take it big. And they got it there on the option play for a loss. A shotgun snap for Love. It's complete here to T.Y. Hilton. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. Six yards is the pickup, and that'll lead to a third down. In so many ways, throwing the hitch route is actually one of the safer things an offense can do. Get the ball out to the receiver as fast as possible, hope he's got man-to-man -man coverage, and hope that his athleticism wins on the perimeter. They had the catch on second down, but it didn't help at all, and now they're looking at third down here. Here's Luck. To the right side to Eric Ebron. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Another good reception there. The Colts on the march. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route is extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, Tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. Oh, nearly a disaster there on the check down. But they'll get it back. The one thing that I've liked defensively is that they've shown them a lot of different looks here in the first half. They've come after them. They've sat back. I think that's what you need to do to keep an offense guessing. And they certainly have kept them on their toes. That's why they haven't had much success on the scoreboard. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. to the air. Luck on second down. Throwing over the middle, and it's incomplete. T.Y. Hilton, the intended receiver. Third down here. It's been my observation. There's been a nice variety of play calling defensively. You and I often talk about an offense's ability to keep a defense off balance with what they're doing. I think the converse has been true in this game. Yeah, I think you're right. They seem to have gone off tendency quite a bit, but only the second quarter. A lot of time to change things. Luck throwing again. Caught left side by Hilton. And the Titans get a signal for a timeout defensively as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. So now the field goal unit trots out there for the third time tonight. From the left hash, this will be a 41-yarder. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And they jump out in front here. It's 11 to 10. So he's been a busy man here in this first half. That's three field goals for him now. And not just three field goals, but three for three. So even though the offense has struggled a bit putting it in the end zone, has still been able to come away with points due to his leg.
Out is the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. This is taken at his four. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. The Titan offense now working their way back onto the field. And the last time they had the football, they surrendered two points on the safety. And they don't want to do that one again. No, not at all. It's almost like a bases clearing double, isn't it? Give up a couple of runs. Sure. <laughs> just, mess, just messes things up for you offensively. But now they've got to go ahead, take it, set it aside, and move forward. Deion Lewis, a first carry for the expatriate. He'll be tackled shy on the 35. Pretty shifty footwork, but didn't buy him much. Now before the second down play, we'll get whistles and a timeout as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. Now a second down throw for Mariota. And an incomplete pass. That'll stop the clock here with just under a minute to play in half number one. It certainly looked like maybe his third or his fourth read on his progression. Just trying to find his outlet man that time. Ends up leading him just a bit too much. The Titans on third down. They've been okay. Two for three thus far. This is third and seven. Working out of the gun, Mariota. Toward the sideline, did he keep the feet in? Yes, he got them both down, says the side judge, and that's good enough for a first down. Give him 16 yards there, a Tennessee first down. First down, Mariota. He couldn't quite hold it, got hit. Ball pops out, incomplete. That's very well timed there defensively because it's not a bad throw, but the collision came at the exact time he was reaching to bring in the football. Really, really well done. Decent offense, just better defense. I think you're right. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Mariota gives to Henry. Give him four on the ground there. They're now left with third and six. Titans moving quickly here. They're in the hurry up. On third down, Henry. And this time he's going backwards. So after the no gain on the last attempt, here they get him behind the line. On fourth down, here's Brett Kern to punt the football away. Chester Rogers, deep for Indianapolis. We have hit halftime. Still two more quarters to go. We'll take a timeout. We'll be back after this. You're watching the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. It's in the game. Second half, ready to get underway. The Colts with a lead, and they will receive the football. And not a bad return here. He gets it out to the 25-yard line. And the Titans getting set to go. They're close, close game, but they're going to need to do a little bit better probably here in half two, no? I would agree with that totally. I would guess it in the locker room. They talked about cleaning up some of the errors, but overall, I think they wanted to be positive with them. Guys, we're right there. Just not playing as well as we need to. Let's pick it up, and we still have a chance to win this game. Yeah, they do. We'll see if they can pick it up. Second half begins with a run by Henry. He finds an opening past the 40, and finally marked down at the 42-yard line. That one good for 33 and a first. We've seen him break off a big run already in this game, and for a second, that one looked like it might be another. Yeah, I think that any defense would say, look, we can't let him get to the second level because sometimes he'll break off the big run on his own, but oftentimes you get additional blocking at the second level, which gets you deeper into the secondary. They keep it with Henry on first down. And he's going to be out of bounds down around the 35-yard line. A good run there on first down, and it'll leave him with a second and two. 
And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. Now it's a bootleg with Mariota. And right side, Henry's got it. No gain on that one, and it's going to bring up a third down. When a linebacker is able to sit at the second level and see things develop in front of him, as soon as he got a hint that the quarterback was checking it down, he just made a beeline directly for the receiver and ended up making the play. The Titans on third down. They've converted three out of five thus far. This time they face a third and two. They'll try to run for the first with Henry. And he's got the first as they'll bring him down at the 28-yard line. They get six on the pick up there as the drive will continue. Well, someone's been having a good game so far. And you know something? Lava has been power running. They decided to turn him loose again on third down, didn't they? They did indeed. He delivered the tough yards. Mariota now to throw on first down. Flushed out right. Gets around him. And he's able to get it to the edge of the red zone at the 20-yard line. He'll get eight on the scramble there. It'll be second and a couple. They brought the blitz that time, and I thought they were going to get to him. But instead, he flipped it on its ear and ended up picking up positive yardage. I thought he was dead to rights, but you are exactly correct, sir. Able to turn that into a positive game. Mariota now on second down. Incomplete, almost intercepted. They haven't picked him off yet. Would have been a great time for the first, but instead it's third down. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half. Incomplete, now incomplete here with the first target of the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him. Though. Find him, find him. Off play action to Henry. Here's Mariota. And that is incomplete. Certainly looked like they were getting ready to convert there on third down, but what an effort to get his hand on that one, knock it away, and brings up a fourth down decision. And for the second time tonight, this field goal unit comes out here. Right hash, 37-yard attempt. And Suckup will put this one right through. And they will grab the lead here by two, 13-11. So no problems at all on that one. And, and you know there's virtually no win. This is a kicker's dream here tonight. It absolutely is, isn't it? So to me, with no win, it should be a passer's dream as well, yeah. right? But in this case, the defense held out. They had to force the field goal. Suckup now set to kick it off following the main field goal. This is fielded at the goal line. And he'll get across the 20 before he's brought down at about the 23-yard line. Here's the Colts now as they get ready for their first possession on offense of the second half. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the time. How many time. plays do you script coming out of the second most, half? Most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to 16. I think in the second half, you're really scripting more like 8 to 10. Kind of a starter or an opener, whatever, they, whatever terminology they use, just something to get you off to a quick start. It's real easy to say this running game needs to be better, but the reality is they've been given little time to actually find a place to run the football. It's almost like the defense is there on the handoff. So now they have to contend with second and 13 after the first down run goes backwards. Here's Luck now on second down. Now he'll dump it underneath to his running back complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A really nice gain of 25 yards. We always talk about having to read defenses and how complicated that is. Well, this was an excellent read. 
read the pressure, and got rid of the football before it even got to him for a nice game. And when they're blitzing like that, running back usually a good spot to go with a football? Without a doubt, because he's right in your sight line or he's near you. So you're able to just get it to him easily. And once he gets in space, that's usually a good matchup for him. Throwing on first down, but this one winds up to be incomplete. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Out of the gun. Lock. Ebron with it over the middle. And taking it across midfield and inside the 45. He's up to 87 yards receiving now, and it's a first down. And after that completion, you can understand why so many teams in the league are emphasizing speed on defense at every position. The tight ends have created so many tough matchups now. If you can't run with a tight end as a linebacker, this is going to be the result every time. Now a carry from Mack. And able to push his way forward here for a good little game. Wesley Woodyard there on the tackle. I think we can safely say that those types of players are the backbone of this offense. We know not every run's going to be a big hitter, but you know they'll take that type of result on each and every attempt. To throw on second down is Lock. Over the middle, it's caught by Rodgers. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. From the 32 now, here's first and 10. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And now a fumble, the ball's out. But I believe the Colts were able to fall on this when they were, and so possession will remain with Indy. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was, because that's all defense is talking about getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. Blitz coming and down he goes. Derek Morgan coming on the blitz. He gets him for a loss of seven. It's a team game, but sometimes individuals do stand out, don't they? How about that for a twofer? Tackle for a loss on the running play on the previous down, and then comes right back and gets a sack. Luck and the Colts looking for something big here after the sack. This is third and long. Here's Luck. And he slides to avoid the hit. That one goes for 29 yards on third down. off there and it would have been a great time for their first pick instead in second down a missed opportunity for an interception would have killed off a drive they had a chance there to finish things off didn't get it done i guess that's why a lot of those guys did not play offense so after the incompletion on first now second and ten from the gun here's love Steps away to his left. And he couldn't quite get there. Tackled down at the one. Luck showing he can be dangerous when he tucks it and runs. He's able to pick up the first down. How about that scramble by Andrew Luck? Sometimes we forget just how big, strong, and yes, fast Andrew Luck is. When he came out of college at the Combine, shocked everyone, ran a sub 4 eight forty. And he grew up a big soccer guy over in Europe, so he knows how to use his feet. That he does, and I think it has helped his legs along the way as well. And he'll actually lose a little bit of yardage here. Back to the two. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. 
That almost felt like the defense said he is not getting in. What a play. Not only stopping him at the line, but pushing him back a yard as well. Back at the two now. Here's second and goal. Just beating the play clock is Locke. And he's got his target. It's caught for a Colts touchdown. Naeem Hines, a two-yard touchdown grab. And the Colts are in for six. And that touchdown ends a streak, for lack of a better word, of three field goals that they put on the board previously. They finally cracked the code. Yeah, they've been down there. They've been in enemy territory, as you said. They just hadn't been able to punch it in until that point. Benatari connecting on the extra point, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is fielded a couple yards deep. And he'll be brought down at the 23, make it the 24-yard line. The Titans' offense now, they get ready to do battle again here. And after the field goal last time, we'll see what they can get here. At least they got points out of the last drive, Charles. I never met an offensive coach that didn't want to drive to end with a kick. <laughs> Most of them want it end with a PAT, right? In this case, a field goal, they'll take it way better than the alternative, which is a punt. Yeah, but you met fan bases that wanted that, that weren't happy with that field goal. <laughs> I haven't met a fan base yet that wants to drive dead with a kick, <laughs> other than the extra point. That's it. And this one will go to the 28-yard line. That throw good for four. It's second down. I know sometimes we can get fooled when we watch him make catches, as we just saw him do there, because he really looks like a wide receiver the way he goes about his business. Yeah, 230, 240 range. Yeah, not not super huge. Maybe not counted on to be that inline point of attack blocker that we used to have in the good old days. But you can flex him out. You can run wide receiver routes with him. You can make him a primary target. And that's how he'll shred the defense. Second down, Mariota forced out to his left. And he'll get this up past the 25 before he's out of bounds. He'll wind up getting four there on his own, but it will leave him now with a third down situation. So many times we talk about having good eye discipline when you're playing defense, making sure your eyes are in the proper place on a given play. Looks like that discipline came to the front there, didn't it? They were able to hold him for a short gain when he took off running. On third down, Mariota. And he couldn't hang on to it through the contact. Incomplete. They had enough yards for the first down, but a clutch hit right there defensively. Jars it free. No first down. Here's Brett Kern now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. He'll send this up into the Nashville skyline, and it's a good one. Fielded at the 20. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Colts will go on offense here, first and 10. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked, but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. On first down, it's Locke. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. The drive starting with a first down, 11 yards on that pickup. And defensively, they were in zone coverage there. Do you have to be a little careful you're losing playing against a good quarterback like he is to not play too much zone? 
Yeah, you have to be careful about how much time you're giving up. I think it's a good point you just brought up. So maybe if you still want to play zone, you go to a zone blitz scheme, and you can drop anyone out of your defensive front, defensive end, defensive tackle. It doesn't matter. You just exchange someone to bring more pressure towards the quarterback and still try and cover downfield. 23 yards on the play. Luck now, a perfect eight for eight to start the second half. Not bad. First and ten. Back to throw. Luck and incomplete. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and 10. Now Mack. Stops short of the 25, but that second effort got him a couple extra. Second down, a little more productive than first. Seven yards on the gain. It gets him to third and three now. That was a really nice run there to bring up third and short. After the incompletion on first down, it's awfully nice to have a running back that you can hand it to and put you back in a good situation. Lock on third down. And he's got Rodgers. And he will have a first down at about the 21-yard line. His fifth catch tonight, and it's good for a first down. Couldn't just sit on it here, could they? Had to throw the ball on third down. Got the big completion in the pickup. Fresh set of downs now. They've got to feel great. And defensively, a backbreaker. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he's going to fight his way forward here for a modest gain. And give him four yards there. It'll be second and six. Well, with the fumble he had earlier, we, we know how key keeping the football is here. That fumble earlier probably at the forefront of his mind. Just hold on to this thing. It's also at the forefront of the mind of the guys who are trying to get the ball from him. And since they've seen him drop it on the ground before, they're doing everything possible to have him do it again. They need that turnover. On the carry, it's Wilkins. And he'll be stopped after a gain of only a couple down to the 15-yard line. And this is why aggressive defense coordinators love to blitz. It wreaks havoc because they end up taking their attention to the blitzers, freed up the D linemen to make the play. The Colts on third down. They're hitting at 60%, six out of 10 thus far. This is third and four. Now it's Locke off the bootleg. And he's got his man, Hilton. And stopped a few yards shy of the goal line at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. So first and goal, six points here would go a long way toward wrapping this one up. They'll fake it. Now Lock. Fighting for the end zone. He lost the football. It's out. And this will get out of bounds at the two-yard line. Now I have to admit, partner, that I've often thought that I don't like this rule where the offensive player fumbles the ball, it goes out of bounds, and they get to keep it. <laughs> that's just because you're a defensive guy. That's why you don't like it. Yeah, you're right. It is a slanted view, isn't it? But that's this is where, for the offensive team, the sideline is their friend. Usually it's not their friend. Yeah, exactly right. I actually played for a guy in college. You know what he used to name the sideline? Sammy. Sammy sideline and use him well. They'll wind up losing three yards here. And that's going to bring up an interesting third and goal. Shotgun snap for Lock. And he will score. Touchdown, Indianapolis. 
Andrew Luck, his second touchdown of the night, and the Colts are able to grow their lead. No lead safe in the new NFL, but this score is really going to give them some needed breathing room. Vinatieri now to tack on the PAT. Vinatieri able to tack on the PAT, and the decision to just kick the extra point winds up successful. Set now to kick this one away, and off it goes. This fielded at the two. And he'll bring it back to just about the 25, call it the 24-yard line. And here comes Tennessee as they get set to take the field. And down on the scoreboard, certainly needing to avoid what happened on the last drive, punting the football. Sense of urgency has to take over for them here. They know the score. They know the situation. And by the way, the punter no longer exists for their <laughs> offense. That's how they have to treat this drive. They need points big time. A first down throw for Mariota. Stocker's got it. Complete. And he'll be brought down. Oh, that's a face mask. Certainly looked like it indeed. Here come the flags. Well, when you're leading in the fourth quarter, that's not the penalty you want. Not at all, and now your discipline comes into question. Having poise this stage of the game, you can't have those kind of plays. And now it's first and ten. A big mistake, especially when you factor in the personal foul yardage. Mariota on first down. Being chased out left. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. He'll get three yards on the scramble there at second down. Looked to me like they adopted what my kindergarten teacher always said. If at first you don't succeed, try, try again. And finally able to hold him in check. He'd been carving him up running the ball. That's the first time I think I've seen where the coverage was good downfield and they accounted for him and stopped him for a short pickup. Yeah, I don't think it was a big adjustment, but much more emphasis on making sure they knew where he was when he decided to take off and go. Sets up the screen to Lewis. And he'll go down here at the 35-yard line. Give him five on the screen play, and that'll set up a third down. For a second there, I thought that might break big. Screen pass. Looked like it was coming together. Looked like there was an opening. Still ended up with a solid game. The Titans on third down. They're at 50%, four for eight. Here it's third and two. From the gun, Mariota. And that's complete to Lewis. And he's going to have the first down yardage as he's down at about the 30-yard line. They get five out of that one, and it moves the chains. And in a two-score game, obviously, every play, every third down, like we saw there, magnified big pickup. It was a huge pickup. What they really want, though, is to not even get to third down. They've got to maximize time and can serve as much as possible. On first and 10, here's Mariota. This will be caught inside the 10. And he will reach the eight-yard line before going out. 23 yards on the play. First and goal, and they got to be thinking a chance to get right back into this football game. Play fake to Henry. Now Mariota. His pass caught at the four. He gets this down to the three, but no further. Brought the great move out of the bag, but couldn't do a ton with it. Nice job defensively to hold him to four, and now it's second and goal. So the ball position now at the three. Here's second and goal. Mariota again. And he just chucked that one out of bounds, out of everyone's reach. Maybe a wise call not to take a sack in this part of the field. It brings up third down. 
Now, nobody was open downfield there. Looked like a pretty clear throw away. Yeah, definitely was that. I'm wondering why there wasn't intentional grounding. I know they're saying there's a receiver there in the area. Those darn quarterbacks, they get away with everything. <laughs> Spoken like a true defensive back, Mr. Oh, did, Davis. Did, did that come out? It did. Okay. That was a third and somewhat manageable now, not so manageable. Exactly, because you had a play call on that you felt like, hey, this could go quick, and it doesn't take much to get it done. Now, you got to start thinking about a little bit of a deeper route type of a call, especially if you want to throw it. A bad time for a false start penalty as they're backed up now for third and goal. They'll throw again. Mariota dumps it off to Lewis. And a pretty little juke move there on a nice game. They wind up with six on the hook up there, but it's not enough. Fourth and goal. Completed pass brings up a fourth down situation. Do you play analytics on this one? Well, you know, what do your analytics tell you about going for it here? I wonder what they would say. They tell me you're down by this margin fourth quarter. You're going. And Suckup will put this one right through. And that lead is back down to nine now. So it's an old school extra point that counts three times. So it's certainly a disappointment they weren't able to get it in the end zone. Yeah, I can just imagine post game, head coach looking at the box score, 19 yard field goal, grimacing a little bit, but having to realize that at that moment, getting three points was vital. Go ahead and get the points, put them on the board. Suck up now, set to kick it off, following the made field goal. This fielded at the two. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here at the 30-yard line. And now Indianapolis set to take the field. This game was really a tussle, seemed like just a moment ago, and now they've got the momentum. A couple of scores on their last pair of drives, and a two-score lead. I think here now you just you go conservative, right? Run the football, work the clock. You know, I usually agree with you, but I'm going after them right here. I really? want to put this bad boy away. I wouldn't be afraid to throw it. They've got all the confidence, all the momentum on their side. Go ahead and take your dagger shots and try and finish this one off. I disagree vehemently. <laughs> I say, run the football. You've got the lead. Well, let's watch it and find out who's right. The tackle is made by Adoree Jackson. Offensively with the lead, you want to run the ball, keep the clock going, but you also want to still kind of be in attack mode too, right? So how do you do that and not come back on your heels? Yeah, think about all the practices we've watched where they have that tempo period to go over things just like this, where they describe the scenario, tell you what they're looking for, and make sure that they're still attacking, yet at the same time not going so fast as to leave too much time on the clock. And they'll get it up just short of the 45 at the 44. A gain of 11 that time at a Colts first down. Now, I'm guessing you'd say this is kind of the key here. Grind out some yardage, work on that clock, see if you can continue to tick it down. Definitely, you want to bleed things out at this point, right? Continue to possess the football, gain some yardage, and put the onus on the defense. Do they have to use timeouts? What are they going to do to stop you? You're taking charge. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Now here's a pass on first down that's knocked away and incomplete. When we start looking for big-time corners, we're going to start with athleticism. But without technique, you're not going to make plays as one we just saw there. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now Lump caught left side by Hilton. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. Eight yards on the completion, but now they face third down. Slant route's effective no matter who's running the route and catching the ball. But when you have a receiver of that stature, you have to be a little bit more precise throwing it. You don't have the same catch radius with the bigger targets. Second down pass play got them eight yards. Now they've got a third and a couple remaining. Now it's Locke. He's got his man on the crossing route. And he will have first down yardage as he's brought down at the 41. Seven yards there, good enough to move the sticks. When you have someone throwing it that well, that confidently, you don't have to call the game in fear at all, do you? You just go ahead and play. Yep, confidence with a lead to throw it here in the fourth, and boom, he's on the money. Yeah, you don't have to tuck your head in and take look like turtle at this point. You can just go ahead and play. 
And the play clock is going to run out here. They're in no hurry to get a playoff. So a little bit of a stiffer challenge now. First and 15 following the delay of game. Club throwing again. His throw incomplete. So they'll come up after the incompletion for second down. Off of play action, Luck. Brought in over the middle by Grant. And he's going to get this inside the 30. The passing game for the Colts finding its stride. Another first down. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he was able to shed the tackle, but the reserves come in for the stop. Two yards on the carry there, it'll be second down. They know that old expression, it's not my night. It hasn't been his so far. I don't know if the legs are a little bit heavy. Sometimes having to hang out all day and play doesn't exactly play to your advantage, but it's been a tough go for him. And every time he looks up, somebody's there defensively. That was the same case on that play. They'll run it here with Wilkins. And give him about three as he gets it down to the 22-yard line. You can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness. That time, the offense winning the aggression battle. And the defense was obviously aiming for the football, maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself, and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did. This will be play number nine of the drive here as they need four yards on third down. Out of the gun, Luck. And this is going to be incomplete. So on fourth down, out trots the kicker in a big spot here. From the left hash, this from 39. And Vinatieri's kick is good. And that will give them a 12-point lead. So they settle for just the three, but clearly right now anything helps trying to salt this one away in the fourth. Without a doubt, obviously a touchdown probably would have been the final nail to finish this thing off, but it still ate up time, got points. So while it's not mission accomplished, it's darn close. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. This fielded at the two. And he'll get it up to about the 26-yard line just across the 25. Out come the Titans now. And last time they got three points, but it was a chip shot field goal. And when you go to the sideline after a chip shot field goal, maybe the offense not too happy. It's a balancing act, isn't it? Because you're exactly right. They're none too pleased that they didn't punch it in for six points. But they also have to remember, they did put points on yeah, the board. Three points and, is three points. And in this league, <laughs> you take points when you can get them. Not easily done. Mariota to throw it. Over the middle, Sharks got it complete. And he's able to take this one up to the 35-yard line. Ten yards on the pick up there, and it'll be second down. Second down, Mariota. And incomplete there, a nice hit. Jars the ball free and brings up third down. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit on half of them, five for 10. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. 
from the shotgun. It's Mariota going underneath for Lewis. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. First down, Titans gain of 12. First down now, but that clock rolling. First down, Mariota. Fighting his safety valve here. That's complete. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. It's a gain of five, and it's a second down. And now we've got movement up front. I think this is going to be on the Titans. Oh, jumping early from his tight end spot. Maybe trying to get a jump start on that route. Yeah, I think you're exactly right about that. And oftentimes when you see that, that means the play call was supposed to come in his direction, and he was eager to go catch a pass. A false start penalty, and now they're back to needing 10 yards on second down. To the air again, Mariota. And he almost intercepted it. They haven't picked a ball off yet. That probably should have been their first. And it's third down now. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum, big play, right in his hands, unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense if that fell harmlessly to the ground. They had the incomplete pass on second down. Now they need a big play here, third and ten. Again, it's Mariota. And that is incomplete. And I think we'll probably see him go for it here on fourth down. No reason not to. Down a couple of scores. They have to try and make something good happen. And they're indeed going to go for it here on fourth down. So trailing here in the last quarter. Let's see how this plays out. They'll try and pick it up with Lewis. And this is going to come up well short as they stop him on fourth down. In on the tackle, Kamoko Ture. So with that, we can just about close the book on this one, Charles. Yeah, what's the old expression about slim and none? Well, slim just left town on that <laughs> They're one. They're down to none? Yes, exactly right. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. And the Titans going to signal for a timeout defensively. As the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in the fourth. Another running situation on the doorstep as they come up second and ten. Throwing now, Luck. Flush to his right. And he can't find a receiver, and he's brought down. Now another timeout here called by the Titans as they stop it here with just under 40 seconds to go in the game. Luck and the Colts looking for something big here after the sack. This is third and long. And they'll run it here. All fighting off the defender. And he'll get it down to the 47 here. And play is stopped here. Timeout. It's the defense calling the timeout here. As the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. Now here's Rigoberto Sanchez as he'll kick it away for the second time. The Titans offense now, they work their way back onto the field. They have a little bit of time left here, but this one not going to go their way. 
And this is where, in this situation for me, you just go ahead and run out the clock, shake hands, congratulations, and move on. Because now, <laughs> you're not going to make up for what's happened during the game in this last sequence. We'll see what they do here in this last sequence. Mariota now to throw on first down. Throwing over the middle, but it's incomplete. The intended receiver, Taewon Taylor, and that'll bring up second down. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll take this up only to about his 18-yard line. Only a yard on the pickup there, so it leaves him needing a conversion here on third and a tough nine. And the spike comes with just 12 seconds left to go. But a tough ask here. They're going to go for it on fourth down and nine. As expected, they're going for it to keep the drive alive. And that'll be incomplete with just six seconds left on the clock. They had to go for it with such little time remaining. And that'll be just about all she wrote for this one. So locked down to a knee, and that ought to be the final act of this ball game. A road win in the National Football League. Charles, you never take that for granted, no matter who you're playing, no matter where you're playing. You take it, and you run with it. <laughs> and you know you primed the pump all week in your own home facility. No one thinks we can do this. Only people who believe are right here in this room. And then you go on the road, band together, and get it done. So that's a wrap for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and this has been a presentation of the NFL on EA Sports. For more, check us out at easports.com. From Nashville, good night, everybody.